Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. for browsing through spatially referenced breast cancer image databases. Um, this is joint work with Dave Tamush, who is one of my graduate students, and sort of a group of undergraduates as well. Okay. Um, as an introduction, breast cancer is one of the leading causes of death in women, and mammography is currently the most cost-effective method for early detection of breast cancer. However, there's a lot of uh, false negatives, so it turns out between 10 to 30 percent of women with breast cancer have negative mammograms. In about two-thirds of these cases, the cancer is evident about, upon review. Now, improving computer-aided detection could reduce false negatives, and what we really want to do is use this to increase the effectiveness of radiologists and really the goal is to avoid misdiagnoses. Now, it's well known that there are alternative technologies and they could perform better than mammography, for example, MRI, ultrasound, and this could be both at detecting the cancer as well as evaluating the malignancy. You can also vary on characteristics of the patient, for example, the age, the breast density, they all seem to be important characteristics. So there's a lot of different ways of attacking the problem. Also, some of the things, something that could be improved by some of our techniques is use of teleradiology, where you would improve the access for rural, rural hospitals, as well as things like mammography vans, which could also upload images and get the diagnosis. So all of these real, all of these tasks could be improved with a suitable medical image database which is sort of what we were trying to build. But we, the goal of our building process is really to apply some pictorial query specification methods that we developed. And so that's sort of where the tie-in to the database is. And so what we built, or we're actually building, is something called Archimedes. And this stands, denotes an archive of medical images. What happened is that we got the project and we had this class in software engineering where we were involving quite a few students in building the database and doing these things. And they came up with a name. And I thought it was not a bad name. If you see the poster next door, it looked that, you know, it's sort of catching and so that's it. Now the goal is to help train or test computer-aided diagnosis systems and we provide the data and doctor's analyses for experiments, and it actually stores the CAD analysis for comparisons as well, as well as feature sets for combination comparison, and enables you to combine these feature sets. Now, the database has a capability of storing images from multiple technologies, such as the mammograms, MRI, ultrasounds, and it also enables research into the effectiveness of the usefulness of each technique, either for the, the screening or the determination. And what we want to do is compare the techniques using images of the same patients or similar sets of patients, as well as finding out how the effectiveness of the techniques correlates with these various characteristics that I mentioned before. Now we'll use this web-based query tool to access the data and we'll combine low-level feature sets by creating these new diagnosis criteria. And what we want to do, of course, is find similar cases similar to the current patient, so improve this diagnosis accuracy. And this is really all, can also be done with a database to determine percentage of similar patients who had malignant cancer or benign. Now, what you know, the, again, these, these techniques will be used for these various aspects of it. So why cancer imaging can be difficult? You have a large amount of extraneous info. The cancer area is the most interesting. And there are many superfluous structures that are similar to the cancerous structures. Some examples are ducts and breasts. And as I said before, many false positives and false negatives. 
there is a high noise level, but ima the image quality is improving pretty quick, you know, a lot. So noise can be less of an issue at times. I'm not a radiologist, so other people can say much more to this. And we're really, the thing we're looking at, again, is the pictorial query specification, which we'll get to soon. Um, okay, so here's sort of an example of some of the things that we've done. And again, this is more of a background in terms of a mammogram. It's really an x-ray of the breast. You have four images are typically taken, let's say two for each breast from top and side. And the texture of the cancer is similar to some of the normal tissue. And here, for example, is what a radiologist oh, okay, show, you know, outlined in red. And the side view, we see here, these are really side views of the left and right breasts. Now, the breast tissue is compressed in the imaging process, which makes 3D reconstruction challenging, but it is done at times. Comparing the images helps in diagnosing the cancer, and the image comparison, again, is necessary because the cancer's appearance is really sim very similar to normal breast tissue. So what we want to do is find the, Im the, the similar image sets. So here's sort of an example, again, that and here we have these tiny colored, okay, these tiny colored circles. They're really shape features. And here you, the, the radiologist, if I can find that big dark circle, I'm terrible at this mouse. Oh, do you see it anywhere? Well, you s anyway, you can see it up there, right? Um, oops, what did this do? Oh. That'll teach me to touch it. Okay, now it should. All right, I got it now. And I guess you point with the. Point with your face. I know, I know that. I know. All right, so. All right. I'm not sure about that. Huh? Yeah, it's right here. Oh, yeah. There. All right, forget this. All right, so now I went on this one. Anyway, um, so that. Oh, I see, we, we went to this slide here. Okay, so again, you see this dark red area, which is where the radiologist has circled it. And notice that the shape features do cluster around the cancer, okay? And we will try to use this observation later. And of course, there are many false positives here, as you can see from this image. Now, one way to do this is to do these spatial queries comparing the left and right breasts, and that could reduce some of the false positives. If there's a similar shape feature in the opposite breast, then probably not a cancer. Where, you know, so if symmetric, it, what we're saying is the symmetry is sort of a natural structure. So we're, in this case, you might say, well, the asymmetry is a, is a sign of possible cancer. Again, this is sort of, not everyone believes in asymmetry, right? Okay, that's, huh? Right, okay, because this gentleman is a radiologist, Robert. So, you know, we, we've sort of, you know, that isn't really the focus of the work, is this asymmetry, but this is one, one sort of test of it. So, that's, it, huh? Could you define shape feature one more time? Oh, the shape feature is just anything that you, you, you might look for something, and it's just a generic term. Okay, just, it could be, oh, it could be like, ex, it could be eccentricity, certain moments of something, or these are, that's what we're, we're saying. Okay, the shape feature could be what it really looks like in terms of moments is a characterization of shape. So we just use the shape feature as a general, as a general term, but you would define shape feature as a shape vector, a feature vector, and you would look for, you know, roundness or various other things in there. Does that make sense? Um, here, these were these were done. These this is really from doctor. This is a an image that was given to us with with them highlighted already. We didn't really we didn't do that. So that's why I can't I, I can give you a shape feature as a general term the way I would do it. But how whoever, whoever did these, I do not really know. I'll talk a little bit about shape features next, but they're in a in a different sort of in a different scale. All right. So here you're really seeing sort of this asymmetry aspect. And what we're trying to do now is, at least on the next slide, is see what we could do with this grouping of these small feature, shape features here. 
Now, what happened, you know, it's sort of observed that the shape features seem to cluster around the cancer. So you, you can look for, for these shape features, you know, for shape features in certain clusters or within certain distance of the, of, the bound, of the boundary of the breast or things like that. So what we could do is look for, for clusters with a distance query. And here the image of the right breast just shows the shape features in some clusters. Now, for example, in this case, we're looking for clusters of three shape features within two millimeters of each other. And here, it turns out you require one feature among the strongest 10. The threshold was relative. And you could also combine strength of clustered features. In this case, the results didn't look that great in a sense that if you, you did this clustering here, you found a bunch of clusters, but really only one of them was, was diagnosed as cancerous by the the radiologist. No, one thing that I didn't say before that I want, to emphasize, I want to emphasize is that different technologies look for different type of features or different characteristics in the image. So I'll look at ultrasound after this. And ultrasound, I think, is more is what Jim was looking, you were looking for before. In there, I can tell you the, sheep, the, the shapes and things much more. You know, there you're doing more shape, look, looking for shapes, whereas here you're looking for features that have been identified by someone and you're looking for clusters or things like that. So here is another sort of a mammogram image comparison where we're trying to compare with the other breast and you could reduce the number of false positives this way. If both breasts have the same structures and then, then probably natural, this wasn't very helpful in this case as I pointed out before. Our diagnosis said that, I mean, the radiologist said this was the cancerous one, these were not. When we look for these clusters in the left breast, we only found really these three here. So we didn't find as many as we did in the right breast. Okay, and it wasn't even the, the matching one. So another, another way of characterizing these things is to look at mammogram boundary distance. And here, it's sort of based on the observation that the spurious clusters usually appear near the breast boundary. So what we're doing now is incorporating the distance from the breast boundary, and you could say remove all the clusters that are within 0.5 millimeter of the, of the breast boundary. And now, this one seems to have worked in a sense that it did eliminate, all of these were near the breast boundary, except for the one that was uh, hit and diagnosed as cancerous. So at least it eliminated the false positives. And you could try this across the entire database. So the goal, in a sense, is to provide a database of these things and possibly a, and allow a doctor or I mean, a radiologist to somehow say, well, I came up with this case. Have I seen these cases before? And depending on the, technology, on the imaging technology, you would look for different things. And th in this particular case, it's more of a clustering, looking for clusters. Next, we'll go on to more shapes relevant to really the type of things that we want to do. So this is the case here. And, so that, and you can see right here and what we've done. I'm not we've done. We're sort of uh, showing you here you know, what the result was in a sense. All right. Now, suppose you're, you're looking at ultrasound. In this case, the technology is the same as a sonogram, where the images are made with sound waves. The darker area is the cancer. The outline is drawn in red. In the case of sonograms, the cancer is really detected more by the shape, by various shapes around here. So this is the important aspect of detecting the malignancy. And in general, if the shape is rounded, it tends to mean benign. Okay, whereas you know, these shape features are important here. So it turns out that another characteristic is lobulations. And it turns out, I mean, from studies I've looked at, I, I think the general con convention is if you have less than three, you're OK. If you have more than three, then you could, you know, that's one of the, the key that you're looking for. And another thing that happens is that you're looking for speculations, which are sharp edges that stand out of the border, that's another type of a feature thing that you're looking for. So here, it sort of answers, Jim, your question more about shapes. It becomes much more, I mean, 
just things are called shape features where someone has diagnosed them, has characterized them before, whereas here you're really looking at a shape, which is what we're more interested in. So in this case, again, the smooth border indicates benign, and the lobby, so you'll see in the next one, this one here, you have a speculation right here. You can see it, you know, we sort of highlighted the thing here. And our goal, in a sense, is to, is to provide a tool to look for certain shapes. So in this case, you could draw this type of a shape and, and then look for it in the image or something like that. We'll show other things a little later. And so this is really the, the goal. We certainly are not there. What we've really done so far is primarily build the database tool and things like that. And we have some technology on pictorial query stuff, which I'll show next. So this is the example here. The shape feature or other shape features could be created to pick out medically important features. In this case, it's speculation, but you could be looking for other features as well. And I'll show you in a moment. So you can characterize a shape as a collection of features to simplify search and focus on medically relevant details. So now what I'm going to show you is sort of this pictorial query specification technique that we came up with, with another, for another application. And what our goal is to do is to apply, to use these type of techniques in, in this medical environment. And what this application was originally was to look for map symbols. In other words, you had a, you had a map and you had le a legend and the legend of the map sort of gave you a training set for the symbols you're looking for. Now when I say you're processing maps, the interesting thing is that if you look at a, a, a map, you say it's hopeless to find symbols there, which is true. However, maps are really constructed from overlays. In other words, they're layers for different symbols. There's a, tour, there's a layer for, let's say, tourist symbols, a layer for, for roads, a layer for various types of symbols. So you, you know, what we were trying to do was really process the layer of those particular symbols. Anyway, this is quite illustrative here. This is a, a screenshot from one of our systems. But in this case, they were, you're looking for tourist symbols, and this is the library of symbols, okay? So in this case, what, what happens is I'm looking for, you know, this sample query here. It says re retrieve all images in the database that have a feature with a square in it, let's say within six millimeters of a feature, sort of the wavy, and doesn't have a feature of an arrow in it. This was an airfield, whatever it is, within one millimeter of this feature here. There's an interesting semantic here because it turns out that, that some of these you want bound to the, same, to the same feature. And the way the query system does that is, I don't want to say it's pretty elegant in the sense that here's your library. So I'm, I'm saying I want this symbol, I take it out of here and move it here. Another symbol I take from here to here. Now, if my query involves, I want the same binding, I just take the symbol from here to here instead of from here to here. It's, it sounds trivial, but this, this involves, you know, it's, it's a very natural thing to, to, for someone who's doing say, well, I put you know, this symbol from here. It's, I wanted this one, but not its relation to this one. So you're able to build a, a pictorial query tree, which has arbitrary you know, combination of ands, ors, nots, and all that. Here we're just looking at a snapshot of a couple of items in the, in, the, in the tree. And that's the idea here. Now, again, this language is not complete. I'm not saying anything about how great it is, but it just gives you a little bit of power here. And there's several things you can do. You can do with what we call varying the contextual similarity and the spatial similarity. The contextual similarity, we have like four, four conditions here. There's, I want exactly the symbols in the query image to match the database image, no more, no less. In the second one, right here you're saying all the, all the symbols in the query image must exist in the database image. However, the database image could consist of other symbols or things like that. The third one is the reverse. It says any of the symbols in the query image must match, but everything in the database image must match somebody in the query image. That's the reverse. And the fourth one just says, just find one of the symbols in the, in the, you know, just one of the symbols in the query image must be found in the database image. 
In the spatial similarity context, we have that the location has to be exactly the same of all the features. Another one could say within the same distance, but you don't care about the relative direction between them. The, you know, the, the third one says, oh, I'm so terrible, oh, here. The third one says any distance but the same direction or within the same distance but any direction or you don't care at all about spatial constraints. In, in the way this thing is done, for every one of these little you know, menu uh, screenshots like this, all of the conditions have to, have to hold. Okay? So the idea really is, but you could have a lot of these little screens specifying the query. Each, just at each one, everything has to hold. Okay, so you could have ands. It's quite a powerful language. Okay, now here's some examples of what we've done. And before I get to example, what I want to point out is that in the previous example, everything looked like it was canned. Okay, and this is one of the problems with a lot of the image database things. In other words, what really what, what passes for an image database is something which is pre-classified. In other words, somebody has gone in and classified everything. So then at the end, it's really not an image data. It, it could be any type of database. It's just that things have, have terms. You have attached tags to the images. And what we're trying to do is to, have, to allow you both ways. So that means that you could do the matching the way we showed before with images that have been tagged by what they are. Or you could also store them what we call an abstraction mode. Abstraction mode says that I've decided on some feature vector, which is what Jim asked before, like, you know, I, I'll weigh roundness a certain amount, I'll weigh the genus or some other things, and that's my feature vector, and then I'm just going to match feature vectors. I'm not going to say what I'm looking for, but just, and that, we call that an abstraction mode. And in this case, we sort of tested it out in this application. Before we were looking for map symbols, there, what we did is we, we took a database of logos. I mean, it's not all encompassing, maybe three, four hundred logos, different shapes. And you can see there's a, these are the logo, some of the logos here. And what we did was we used sort of a freehand tool to draw the shapes. Because this really, after, what led us to the medical application in the sense that our goal, our view is really for a radiologist to have this type of a tool you know, say, well, I saw this type of a shape in this other shape here. Can I find similar configurations both spatially and these type of things? So here you can see we have sort of this horseshoe in a circle or something like that. And in this case, I just care, I didn't care about any relation, any distance. And you can see it fetched logos like this because, you know, it was turned around. This was also sort of fit the mold. Okay, here the circle is not within the horseshoe, but it's still there, okay? Oh, those are sort of confidence levels that we had. They're just rel relative, okay? Here, we took a simple triangular little feature, and you can see the ones, some of the ones that it found. We didn't care, there was only one symbol, so there's really no, no point about relation or distance. Here is the example where you sort of do the logical aspect. You're saying, well, I want this, but not this. So we're taking the U-bend with a circle, but no triangle shape. So if you, if you remember from before, you know, there's something here with a triangle. Which one was that? It's this one here. I think this is the one that left us, or what? Yeah. So it, it sort of took these as triangles, and so it, it went out. Um, now here is sort of interesting. It gives you the, the power of the normalization of the features. Here you're sort of looking for this four-leaf clover or something like that, but it's all subject rotation. You know, you, you normalize things with rotation, other things. You can sort of see the things it found, you know, with a certain, uh, you know, level of acceptance, but you see even found this DDX here, these sort of patterns here. They're, Arguably, they're not the same, but with the normalization and everything, it, it's not, not bad to, to look for it. Here, we're looking with spatial query type things, okay? With, so we're saying, I have these three bars. The important thing here is not the distance between them, but their shapes and, if, and their relative, you know, relative positioning. And it found this Achilles here. Um, 
it wasn't bad. Here, an example where we relaxed things. We didn't care about the relation and the distance. We really were looking just for these four shapes. And of course, it found a much richer set. Okay? Another example is I'm looking for these three dots here. And I'm saying, I don't care about the relation between them, but the distance, the relative distance is important. And here you found these, these type of things here. The reason the O and the O here, because they got squished into a, cir into a circle, so that's where you got this glow point here. In this case here, we're more interested in the same relation, but any distance. So the circle had to be above these, and now you know, it just retained this one here. Okay? And again, we're looking at, this sort of gave us the idea for the medical, medical things, is that a lot, you know, these features are hand, you know, these were obviously not hand drawn because you also have a library of, feature, of, of shapes to do. But I tried to show you here both the use of from a library and that you draw yourself, okay? So that's, you know, that's the goal and the, sort of the things we want to be doing and we sort of setting up an infrastructure for doing it and you know, the very rudimentary things that we have and this slide I sort of described before, the capabilities of this Archimedes system that we're building would be to, to do this shape-based search that we mentioned before, that the doctors can locate existing information on a specific shape of a tumor. You would search on the basis of existing predefined shapes. And again, we said you would draw them yourself. And the spatial search would be using the relative positions and the, and, and the directions between them you could also use the distance search for queries to look for clusters as we saw in the mammogram things. Um, there's ability to annotate the images and that would be just the associate plain text with a particular image. And the idea here is really to have multiple users being allowed to annotate the same image at the same time. And we also would allow you to overlay image features. There's a virtual marker to highlight and draw on an image and the idea is to have multiple overlays to capture analysis from different doctors. You could use it to test their, you know, to test their diagnosis or, is, or sort of comparison. This also enables you to do sort of a teleradiology uh, capability as well. And of course, there's also a text and range search capability, or at least hooks to be able to do that. So this is sort of a screenshot of what we we built. And down here, you would have, you would show the shapes for the query on right here. Let's say you can draw shapes over an image for querying in the top right. So this would be something like this here. The patient data and notes, you, in this sort of in this window here, you could do that. The image annotation can also be done here on the top right. And again, the types of queries, sort of a menu of some limited subset is here. And if you run a query, the results will come up with these thumbnails. Right here it says search results. So you would get some of these search results here. And you know, that's the, the idea here. Um, you could also, of course, enlarge and this sort of explaining the user interface or whatever to it. And you have, the, as I said, you have the ability to annotate the images as we show right here. I don't know, it doesn't come out that well, but uh, you can see the different colors where somebody went and annotated it. And you have a drawing tool, you have the, you know, the text notes at the bottom, of, uh, type them in the, the bottom of the image. And again, these multiple annotations could allow second opinions. It's also good for research. So this, you know, in conclusions, you know, most medical databases allow query on text only. Our goal is to start allowing queries on these databases by drawing or, you know, more of a pictorial aspect. Also, different types of image content uh, in, con in conjunction with text. And we would also store, an you know, multiple annotations, feature sets, as well as allowing new feature sets to be added and the storm in the database so that other people could possibly use it. Uh, the previous slide was about my research interests, just to point out that I really come in from the spatial side, done a lot of work on GIS, representation of spatial information, as well as searching. And we sort of got into this with this map things, which then became generalized just with the logos, with the general features. 
And I, I sort of thought that it'd be a great idea to have to try to apply this technology in a medical context. So there are a lot of tools, you know, many of the tools that we use really come out of the GIS work that we've done more on spatial indexing and things like that. And some of this stuff actually runs on this SAN browser, SAN spatial database that we built. All right. And, oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. Thanks to Microsoft Research for sponsoring us on this. And there's a group of undergraduates here listed who actually worked and built the sort of database thing, which is non-trivial. All right. Any questions? Yes. How about the accuracy of using the distance, the shape, not being how Well, I mean, in terms of, yeah, the accuracy I showed you there, we haven't started on the medical stuff there, so I can't really tell you at all on that. What I showed you accuracy was on the logos, and yeah, again, one of the reasons that interesting about the medical applications is that nobody knows, there's no answer, okay? And when I say no answer, there's, I mean, you know whether it's cancerous or not, but it's, it's sort of a, a judgment thing. I mean, the, the, the goal of all of these diagnoses is to avoid the, inva the invasion or the biopsy if it's not necessary. Am I right? I mean, again. This is not really a diagnosis. We're making screening here so far. Yeah. From a medical point of view, I mean, the attempt you're using as a diagnosis, some diagnosis, you're doing first screening. That's it. Yeah, that, that's the point. And you're right that you're trying to avoid the medical biopsy. That's it. So. The, the, what is interesting about these applications, again, I'm at Maryland, I'm really in the computer vision lab. And the, the, one of the things in computer vision is you, the, 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 the standards for success or for doing things or inspection or other things are very high. Okay? I don't want to say that the standards are low here, but the bar here is much lower. So anything you do, I mean, you, you allow more inaccuracy. Okay? What you're doing is providing information or getting, you know, a radiologist cannot possibly look at everything, you know, all the database, all the images they've seen. So what this tool will try to give you is the ability to go back and find things that are similar and, you know, maybe it's, you know, and actually you might even learn from. In other words, hey, there may be some shape, there are many things that have this particular pattern which you may not have noticed before. It's just this time you see this configuration. So we're really looking for and I'm not, it's not clear to me, in, in, in all honesty, whether this particular application is the best suited one for the pictorial query specification. It could be another one, but you, you see what I'm saying. I mean, you saw in the cluster, in the cluster with the mammograms, there's certain a, way, a certain way of looking for, for the feature, you know, for what is cancer or not. In, in the ultrasound, you're looking for different things. So I'm saying, we're trying to adapt this technology, this, you know, this technology of pictorial query specification, which is really where we're going at, to this domain where I think you know, it, it may work, but one of the things you need for success here is really a much more, you know, more interaction with the radiologist, with the people like that. And one of the things you find out is that the data is a highly competitive business, and, and getting people to let go of their data is non-trivial. Okay, and this is one of the issues that, you know, problems that we've, we've had. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, okay, all right. Cubic, one of the, one of the things about all, you know, most of the methods for, Im for image kind, they're not on shape, they're not anything. They're really on features like text, oh, they're features like texture and color and things like that. They're things that you could quantify, but you, you don't have the shape and the relative position. Our work is the only one that has really done the shapes and, and really the relative position, the spatial things, and I, I, I'm well aware of those things. And, and they're basically, they, they can't really get the content specifically. Right. Yeah. I yeah. The oh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of trademarks, are, yeah, but they don't really look for something next to something within something. They're looking for a global thing, that, a texture, a color, and things like that. It, it's very misleading, I don't mean to say misleading, but it, it's, yeah. I just have a question about the experimental method, and that was, do you have enough historical data 
So the, those false negatives that might have been... Right. Okay. Yeah. We didn't do many experiment, any experiments at all here. I'm, I'm, I'm explain, I, that, I, I, want, I want to make that really clear. I thought I did before. We're, we're talking about a technology and trying to apply it in, in a database and building. We have not gone to that stage at all. Okay, so the, the only experiments you saw here a little bit were the testing of the query capability on some logo database just to show you that it actually was able to retrieve some interesting shapes based on those things and the, the goal really is to possibly do it in the medical things. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I, you know, I, I really like the, the idea but on the other hand it, it's, it's kind of true that there's no free lunch. Let me that. Uh, I, I don't think from a point of view of an mammographer who is actually reading uh, the tool like this would be uh, very much used, at least at this moment when it's not refined and done and improved. For example, in, if I'm not, if not, I'm not mistaken, you're actually making an, uh, you're actually making a mistake in simpler reason. That is, you were saying in the beginning that around 30% of those mammogram reading is, is not exactly correct. And it's true, and we actually call it, you know, like uh, Monday, Monday back doctor. It's easy to look back when you know that there's a cancer. Uh, but eventually, you want those images. I'm not I have a doctor. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that guy who annotated the image could be uh, actually wrong. And he's a 30%, right? I have a 10%. So, you don't really have a ground proof right here. And, and this is known in medicine. Actually, National Institute of Health sponsored the study that we, they tried to do an image data based on lung cancer. So they, they collect the data from seven different centers that they, they do a multi reader study. And those dogs have kind of a problem to agree what is tumor what is not. So it is, it is, it is really a difficult problem. So how they trying to do the dogs? They're trying to go to pathology tests. But guess what? Those guys are also using the eyes. So why they should be better? <coughs> because it is a problem. I disagree with this. I, I think it's fine. But why, why think, so that's kind of raging. But one thing that I'm not sure what I understand is um, how you're saying there's a database. So uh, my, my, my computer that I'm sending is really kind of shallow, but I would imagine that there should be some features and, and, and they should be extracted some way. So eventually you're trying to match it against whatever you already have in database. How this part is done? I mean, how do you create this, this data? How do you get extraction of features? How do you, how do you sort of go there? Well, I mean, the here, I mean, the, the features are things you would des describe certain, I'm looking for certain features, certain things, and you would characterize, I mean, for example, on the, on, on the examples with the logos or those shapes, you're, you're saying, okay, here's a measure of roundness, here's a measure of this, these are your features, okay? Then you take these features, you, you, you construct a feature vector for them. You weight, you know, you, you, uh, you'll construct some weights based on their range so that, you know, their range of values. That's your feature vector. That's what's done, okay? Well, no, well no. some people may do them in advance. What we're trying to give you the ability to do here is on the fly, okay? Mo what most of the time is done is they don't even do, you know, they're just kept, somebody will say, this is this, you know, they'll measure, okay, as uh, Jim Gray just said before, on cubic or things like that, you say, well, here's my texture, here's this, here's this, and that's your, sort of your feature vector. What we're trying to do is do something with characterizing shape, okay? The shape, for example, for us is a contour. It's a Fourier, Fourier descriptor with like 32 coefficients. We take the Fourier descriptor with these 32 coefficients, and we map. It's a point in a 32D space, and that and that's it. Okay, so I give you an example. But our what our Fourier descriptor is of the contour of the shape. That's what's done in these particular things. In other examples, with the with the symbols like the hotel symbols and things like that, we actually use roundness and other features, okay? Another thing that we did here, an example is on features, you asked. Well, on the examples with the logos, where you have, where you have 
in sort of known shapes. You have squares, you have other things. You could describe those very shapes as ellipses, as circles, squares, other things, and now what or splines, okay, or or, or or polygons, okay? Now what you're doing now is every shape you're gonna dis you have a program that decides what's the best, you know, what's the best representation of it as a polygon or as a spline or something like that. Once you do that, that's your feature descriptor. And what we do is we normalize to get you know the relative sizes. And the idea here was to give you an example of what you can derive from it. And the, the whole thing you know, is based on the premise that, well, this might be useful in, in medicine. And that's the thing. It's a, it's a test. It, you know, it's, I don't say, it's, it's not, we're not saying, hey, we have the tool. You're gonna, it's going to work for you. No. The idea is to say, here, you might have this tool. You might be able to use it to actually look at old data. In other words, there is data about whether it was a cancer or was not. And people still learn from experience. Okay, So what this is a way of harvesting the old experience, a way of querying on it besides the eyeballs. Because the eyeballs can't really find the similarity. So this is a substitute eyeball, in a sense. That's what it is. So you know, that's, that's the goal. I think Claudio had a question. No, okay.